Hey, welcome back guys. Last time we looked at triggers and this is going to open up a whole bunch of opportunities for us. So let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, triggers that we set up last time. I'm even going to get rid of the nice box of crates I made and that zombie there. And we're going to be looking at doors, specifically the funk door. So what exactly is a funk door? So this kind of door is not going to be like the ones that you have in your house that rotate on the hinges, but it's going to be more like a Star Trek door or the doors of an elevator, for example. It's just going to be an entity that's going to slide the full length of its brush when touched, just like you'd expect, a door. So let's go ahead and build one. We're going to need some textures. So let's go in here and to find door, you can type the word door and there's a few, but more of them are going to be listed under DR. And some of them even have these door frames. So let's go ahead and pick one of these door frames from this standard door here. And I'll go ahead and build out the door frame right here in this hallway. So right now I've adjusted the grid. To show you 16 units. And I want to remind you that a unit is the smallest possible brush you can make. So we're looking at 16 units wide, and that's a good standard wall size, and I'm going to use that for my door frame. So let's go ahead and put it under here, stretch it up a little bit, and apply. There we go. So that's not good enough. So obviously there's some issues going on here, so let's center this out. There we go. And then I'm going to cut off these sides here. And I want to keep both parts. And then we're going to apply, I'll just apply this texture here. We'll do the same on the other side. Center that. Apply this here, apply that there. Okay, we've got our door frame. Let's cut out the black area. Easiest way to do that would be to separate the middle portion. And luckily they are the right sizes. And I'm going to separate the top. And I can even keep the black portion as my door. Let's go back in and find that door that goes with that frame. Apply. I'm going to center. And I have all the surfaces right now selected, so it's going to center all of them. Um, let's, okay, I hit face here because I want it to match as it appears in the uh, display view here. And let's see how the other side, I'm going to keep the, so I want to flip this one too. Easiest way to do that would be to make it a negative scale for the X direction. There we go. Alright, now I want to make my door a little bit thinner. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and lower the grid size. And I'm gonna make them about eight units each. Okay, I want to clean this up a little bit, so let's hide the door. And I'm just gonna grab this gray texture that I know of. There's the, this one. Okay. And this is for a file cabinet. And let's just apply this here, here, and here. Oops, there we go. That's good enough for now. Let's bring our door back. And let's go ahead and do Control T and set it to Funk Door. Okay, the first thing we want to do is tell the engine which way we want the door to slide. And luckily that's pretty easy because we have this little rotational thing that says yaw. So whichever way I point this in is the direction that the door is going to slide according to my top view. Now I know that up in my top view is this way. And, and with this texture I have arrows so that's going to make sense. And this little drop down is going to tell you exactly your units. So I want that 90, not 91, because 
setting this by hand can mess up the numbers sometimes. And what this corresponds to is the yaw value in the pitch yaw roll property. So it's going to change this second value, which it did. And now we should expect it to slide its full length like that. So let's look at some of the other properties. And we can give it a name, but this is only going to be if I want to trigger this with, say, a button or something. If I give it a name now, it will be locked. You have render mode, so if you wanted to make a glass door, for example, you could set that to texture, or if there was a masked texture, like a fence, you could use solid. We're going to keep that normal. Global entity, we can skip. Pitch yaw roll, that's our directions. We can come back to that later. Kill target, we'll look at that another time. So the speed dictates how fast the door is going to move. I won't go into too much detail about how this relates in the world with the units, but just know that you can jack this number up if you want to go faster, and lower the number if you want to go slower. And next we have master, and this is used to create locked doors. And this is outside of the scope of this video, but you can just remember that. Move sound, these are predetermined sounds that the door will make when it moves, or you can have no sound. And stop sound, predetermined sounds that this door will make when it stops, just like it sounds. Uh, also, you can have no sound. So we'll go into what these, uh, what these actually sound like if you stick around towards the end of the video. Delay before close. It says minus one stay open. So this is the number of seconds that the door will stay open for. And we can change that to keep the door open for a longer amount of time. Or as it suggests, just put a negative one there and it'll stay open. Um, let's go ahead and run the map and see what this looks like. Okay, and the door works exactly like we imagined. We have set no sounds. The door opens for four seconds and then closes on its own. And you will notice that the door is interfering with the door jam. And I'm going to show you how to fix that next. So as I mentioned earlier, the door is going to slide its full length of the door like this. And that's why we see both the door jam and the door. So what we can do to fix that is we're going to set a lip. And that's this field here. So whatever value I type in the lip field will be the number of units less that the door will travel. So if I type in 4, then we know that the door instead of going that the door instead of going the full length, it will hang out 4 units like that. So we will be able to see the inside of this door. So I want to go ahead and replace that texture and you can use anything really. If we want the door to travel a further distance than its full length, so if you wanted it to move this far, you would just need to count the number of units between its opened and closed position and then put them as a negative for the lip. Damage inflicted when blocked. So if the player is standing in the doorway when the door closes, It'll dish out damage to the player in, based on whatever value is in here. Message if triggered, we don't need to do anything with that. Target, we can put the name of another entity in here and it will target that. Delay before fire, this is just the number of seconds it will wait before it triggers its target. Fire on close, this is basically another target field, but it will only trigger its target when the door closes. Health, shoot open, I tested this and this doesn't do anything. Locked sound. Just like the move sound, you can apply a locked sound or an unlocked sound. But we'll look at this when we look at locked doors. Locked sentence. So instead of the sound effect, you will hear the PA system uh, read some predetermined lines, which are written here. Same with the locked sentence. And then after that, we have some advanced lighting settings, but we'll look at those another time. Let's look at the flags starts open when this is checked when you run the map the door will be in the open position you won't need to use this one too much but if you just can't get your door to do what you want it to do you might need that 
don't link. Now you can ignore that. I haven't found a good use for that. Passable. This will remove the collision from the doors, so the player will be able to walk right through the door. This might be useful if you want to make an object with a sliding effect that you can target, but you don't necessarily want the player to use it like a door. Toggle. This can be useful for when you want to make a door that opens and closes with a button, but you want the button to both open and close the door. Use only. This will allow the player to press the use key to open the door instead of just touching the door. However, this will ignore the the delay before close. So you can use this in concert with the toggle flag to allow the player to press the use key to both open and close the door. Monsters can't. By default, some NPCs and monsters like grunts and zombies would be able to open the door on their own and this would prevent that. Not in deathmatch. When the map is loaded up in multiplayer, the door won't appear in the map. Okay, that's an overview of all the settings. As promised, here's a list of the various predefined move and stop sounds. Okay, thanks for watching. Stick around next time and we'll look at how to use a funk door to make a door with transparent glass.